Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're going to uh, have an illuminating experience with some scrap acrylic and a bunch of random junk from around the shop. Also, we're going to help a friend of mine out who built his studio and uh, he's missing some lighting. That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, uh, this chubby geek is feeling enlightened. Or should I say, I want a lightning. <laughs> Whatever, I want to build a lighting project. And this is a special project because a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, he had a strange development when he was building his studio in his backyard. And somehow or another, he's missing a light switch. So he's kind of in the dark. I know, it's complicated. At any rate, this is going to be a sci-fi inspired lighting project, of course, but I think it should still be pretty fun. And you're probably wondering a little bit about the Gonk Build project. Hey, you rock it, buddy. I'll deal with you when I'm good and ready. <sighs> Sorry about that, geeks. He's a little bit of a challenge, but we'll get to part two of the Gonk Build very, very soon. I promise. If he gets his nuts and bolts in order. Anyway, let's get on with today's build. When we make one of our droid socket kits, we're left with the negative of the center wheel. And you guys are so amazing that you purchased a ton of them from us. But this got me thinking about how best I could use them, the leftover parts. And I kept coming back to lighting. It just seemed like the perfect fit. I figure I could take the leftover scrap of acrylic, a cool Edison bulb, some simple lamp pieces, and whatever random junk I could find in the shop and put together a very cool sci-fi inspired lamp for my friend. We build a lot of ridiculous things around here, but one aspect of our builds that I try to keep in mind is functionality. I love having a great looking object that serves a purpose. I also am addicted to lighting design. Lighting can completely transform the look of an object or the environment that it's in, and that fascinates me. Also, since this does serve a purpose, for those of you trying to find a way for a sci-fi prop or Star Wars prop to wind up in your living room without your significant other noticing, then yeah, make a light. Yep, I'm sorry geeks, I have no idea what these pieces are by the way. I'm pretty sure the black part is a piece from a furnace that our friend Ronnie gave us, but the rest, I just don't know. I want to take just a moment to say thank you to our Patreon members. You have no idea what all of this means to Chris and I to have your support and constantly give us the ability to create new content and hopefully more and more of it. So thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you for all the words of encouragement. You guys are the best. In order to fit the lamp socket into the empty space, I wasted zero time trying to find something that might fit or fuss with hole saws that had sizes that weren't correct. I quickly just measured and cut two rings from the good old laser cutter, which I think is time that we name it. So if you have a cool name, drop it in the comment below.
constantly trying to find different paints for my airbrush. And this time I tried the Vallejo metallic color acrylic for the base of the lamp. These paints are already thinned and ready for your airbrush, which is nice. And I love the metallic bronze finish that this one produced. For the base, I cut two pieces of MDF and topped that with a metallic black acrylic. This had to be cut into two pieces because the laser isn't big enough to do this in one pass. The part could easily be made with a jigsaw and a little time by the way, but I was tight on time this week and I needed to finish this project in one day. The MDF gave me enough thickness so that I could screw the lamp base down without popping through the other side. All the pieces were attached together with simple CA glue. I found a great place to purchase vintage lighting parts. And coincidentally, the company is called Vintage Wire and Supply. I've been a big fan of their product for years, and you can find pretty much everything you need to build a lighting project from them. I encourage you to check it out, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, I'm gonna point out that I'm not an electrician, so please do your research before you try this. I purchased my plug, my switch, and then the socket from Vintage Wire and Supply, along with the wire. And I checked out all kinds of instructions, documentations, as well as other research before doing this. That said, it's pretty straightforward for this lamp. First, I started with the socket, and inside you'll find the base has both a silver screw and a gold screw. I fed the wire through the base of the socket first, and then carefully cut the cloth wrap around the wire. Once that is removed, you'll see you have both a white, which is neutral, and a black, which is hot. You then want to strip back the insulation about three quarters of an inch and give them a twist. Next, you can attach them to your socket. The white, which again is your neutral, goes to the silver screw, and the black, which is your hot, goes to the gold screw. A tip when doing this, wrap your wire around the screw so that as the screw is put in place secured, it will also help wrap the wire. Also, make sure you don't have any rogue wires sticking out. Keep it clean the best you can. And finally, don't get yourself confused like I did and putting all the socket pieces back together. Okay, so wiring up the switch, don't make the mistake I did and cut both wires. You only need to cut one. So what I ended up doing is soldering the hot lead back together and then wrapping it securely with electrical tape to protect inside the switch. This would have been way easy if I had just left it alone uncut. But yeah, brain fart. Inside the switch, I connected both sides of the remaining wire to the silver screws on either end and buttoned up everything. The plug is also pretty straightforward. Once you open it up, you're gonna find much of the same as you did with the socket. There's a screw terminal that's silver for your white, which is the neutral, and a gold terminal for the black, which is also your hot. You can wire those up and then tidy it all in.
Now this is where I made everything a bit complicated. I found that I had 30 or so aluminum knobs and instead of purchasing the $2.79 shafts with an Allen set screw, I decided I would drill out 24 of my aluminum knobs. This seemed like a really good idea at the start, but an hour and a half after, I was starting to think my friend really wasn't worth it and he could just sit in the dark. Sorry, upside down. to tell you geeks, I'm pretty excited about how this turned out. I'm such a fan of making lighting fixtures of all different kinds, especially when they have a bit of a sci-fi twist to them. I think something like this could fit nicely in a living room or at a bar in a spaceship basement. But this one is going out to a friend of mine, as I said. Hopefully he enjoys it and it sheds a little light on his studio situation. By the way, my friends, this track that you're listening to right now was written and produced by a longtime friend and Patreon member Jeff Montoya. Jeff, thank you so much for the awesome track. Everyone, please take a look at the description below and follow that to Jeff's tunes. And I just want to point out that Jeff, you've shown that you don't have to just create things with physical objects. You can make music. And that's just another way of building something out of nothing. <laughs> 